Lifestyle Podcast. Interviewing the world's industry leaders on their journey. Hello and welcome along to the Candy Fans Lifestyle Podcast. I'm Nick and this week we speak to a man who really needs no introduction. It is of course Old Beach founder Wayne Lineker. Just how do you go from working on a fruit and veg stall to becoming the face of the most iconic party island on the planet? This is the journey of Mr. Ibiza himself, Wayne Lineker. Wayne, welcome along to the podcast. Honestly, thank you so, so much for coming on here. Um, I am genuinely really looking forward to this. Thank you, Nick, and thanks for inviting me. It's, uh, it's an honour to be on your show. I mean, it's not an honour, but <laughs> I just think well, it that is, it's. Really. I just think it it's interesting because really. so many people know you, but not many people maybe know you. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's certainly true. Yeah, um, yeah, it's difficult to to get your head around sometimes. But you know, people are genuinely nice to me. Most people, obviously, we get you get your haters, but you know, that's part of life, isn't it? Do you know what's just struck me? You've actually got the perfect voice for a podcast. <laughs> Listen to those gravelly tones. <laughs> oh, they're so gravelly. <laughs> you should yeah. be doing this, not me. People keep throwing me strep cells, but they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, to start off, what's the one thing people don't know about you you would really like it if they did? Um, I don't know because I, I do portray, I try to portray everything about me on my social media, but um, obviously my, my main priority in my life uh, is my family. You know, I, we, we spend a lot of time together. Uh, we go on holidays together every year and uh, we're all really close. Um, yeah, you know, I am a family man. People just think I'm just there for the party. Um, part of me is obviously, but uh, there's, there's another side of me that's uh, very caring and loving and generous uh, towards my family, and 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 I do a lot of work for charity. You know, I do a lot of work for for Down syndrome people, and um, you know, people like that. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's that's a good side of me, I guess. On that topic, do you want to tell me about Dom's food mission? Yeah, Dom's food mission is something I got involved in. I don't know, probably. If, four years ago now um it's a great charity uh i was kindly asked by don warren who who founded it to be an ambassador um and yeah it's uh, basically they take all the surplus food from marks and spencers and uh tesco's and big stores like that they just this close out of date stuff and then they pack that all away and deliver it to homeless people uh which i've attended several times um handing out the food you know, we got to go to car parks and underground in sort of yeah. um, Hastings area, Brighton area, and uh, yeah, it's it's a really uh, it's a really great thing. And what they're doing at the moment is obviously delivering food to the less vulnerable who can't get out um, for for obvious reasons of this uh, of the climate in the minute and what's going on. But yeah, it's a great charity, and I'm proud to be involved with it. It's amazing, really, isn't it? Because, like, so much stuff goes to waste and you just think, like, God, like, yeah. they could do so much better with that. And yeah. I suppose it kind of takes you a little bit back to, if I'm right, where you started, isn't it? Like, did you start, like, selling fruit and veg on the stalls and stuff? Is that right? I did indeed, at the age of 14. Well, I left, I left school just before my 15th birthday. Right. I never took, I never took any exams, nothing. I just... Uh, you know, since I was 12 years old, I was working on the markets weekends with my dad, fruit and veg. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, my life was learned on there, really. You know, it's a, it's a, a fantastic education to know, to, to get streetwise, really, and find out what people actually want, you know, how to, how to speak to people, how to have a laugh with people, you know, that sort of thing. So, so that yeah, helped was, you uh, a lot now as well, obviously, like the gift of the garb and what you yeah. do now in a way it's similar really yeah absolutely you know the market banter was was back in the day i mean it's not the same now because the yeah. markets aren't what they used to be but but before all the supermarkets started opening and selling fruit and veg way back in 1986 80, 88 is when the superstores started opening up and the markets took a big tumble but we did um 
we did learn a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I used to join in an old market band, you know, come on, girls, get your gums around me plums. That's sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Get your, I love it. Get, yeah, get your melons in the bowl, babe. Let me wear them up. You know, that's <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun back in the day, but it, it was a big learning experience for me. Do you know what? Something else I read and I thought, that's mental. So people who don't know, obviously your brother's Gary Lineker, footballer, does match of the day. He said that you've got more footballing talent in your little toe than he's got in his whole body. Yeah, that's probably true, actually. Really? <laughs> but the problem, but the problem is the talent in it. The talent ended in my little little toe. It never went into my head. I was, a bit <laughs> <weird lunatic. laughs> I was crazy. I was crazy as a, as a boy, you know, growing up, and uh, I just wanted to go out with my mates, as I still do now. Really. Nothing's changed. Um, yeah, I wasn't the dedicated one that Gary was. You know, you've got to have, you've got to have the whole dedication, commitment, skill. You know, the lot. He had it all, but I only have one thing. I'm afraid. So, how did you end up getting into bars from fruit and veg? Like, it's a bit of a leap in it, really. I know it's similar in a way of speaking to people, but it is a leap. Yeah. It's, it's a total contrast to what I was in. And, yeah, as I said before, the market started taking a tumble. I could see no future in the market, so I had to think of what else I could do. And at mm. that time, Gary, Gary was, you know, incredibly famous, you know, as big as they get, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I shared the same second name, so I thought, "Look at you! <laughs> let, let, let's 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 turn this situation around and use it to my benefit." Right. So that's what I did, and I went to Tenerife in 1987 and opened Lineker's Bar, and you know, and it just went from there. It was an immediate success. Um, you know, back in the day, there was no beach clubs or anything like that, so it was all about night time. So everyone used to meet in the bars in them days, and you know the bars struggle a little bit now because um, everyone's everyone's always pissed by the time it's <laughs> ten o'clock at night. They're all straggling out of ocean or, or places like that, you know. So and then they go home for a little sleep now, and then they go to the club. So the bars suffer a little bit. I mean, they're still good, but it's not like it used to be years ago. I've heard like some amazing stories though about Lineker. It's like back in the day where you know, like TV commentary wasn't as much of a thing where bars had it. So. Someone said that you were playing it, kind of, you'd ring a house that had the had the TV with the commentary on and then play it through the phone on the mic in the Linux. Yeah. Is that right? That's very good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bad. but we used, to, we used to look at all angles because, you know, uh, there, was no, there was no Sky TV then. There was yeah. no TV, to be honest, in the bars, you know, no, no coverage of the games. So the only thing we could do was try and get it through on radios, but... That was very infrequent and not reliable. So I had the idea to call my mate up. Um, his name was Terry Bateman. He lived in Waltham Abbey in Essex. Right. I, used to call, I used to call him five minutes before kickoff. He used to put his phone against the, um, against the TV. And <laughs> I, used to, I used to link that through the speakers at the bars. And, That's and, amazing. And that, and, yeah, we got absolutely packed. It was a joke. Uh, but no <laughs> No one else was doing it, and uh, I had to I had to do it from the office and channel it through to the bar, so no one would find out what <laughs> what I was doing. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. But Lenigas just became wild, didn't it? Like it was infamous yeah. for just being nuts. Yeah, it was a crazy place, man. I mean, you know, I I looked at it. I think the big success behind Lenigas was that I looked at the bar industry then, and it was at a time where all the all the um, security guards and the Etc. That were working in the premises were very volatile, very nasty, um, and you know if you stood on the tables or anything like that, you get thrown out. And I thought to myself, yeah. let's turn this around. You know, let's let's give them what they want. You know, if they want to stand on the tables and the chairs, let them do that. Yeah. You know, and, and have a dance and go mad. So I, I, I literally let everyone do exactly what they wanted. Well, obviously within reason, and it just was a success. You know. Um, uh, so yeah, it was a proper fun pub, and um, I just thought, why take all these people's money, get them pissed, get them, they start dancing on the chairs and throw them out. It's just not right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it, that was a that was a great great success for us to to let people do what they want. It used to cost us a few quid in refurbing the bar all the time, but you know it was worth it. 
it's mad because like when I think back, like when I was probably about 19, 20, that was when I first went to Marbella, that when I was first involved in Candy mm-hmm. Pants. Yeah. And I yeah. remember like Limicas was infamous. It was that one probably one of the only places in that whole port where it didn't matter who you were, at some point in your holiday, you had to go to Limicas, which that's amazing, really, if you think about all the venues that are there. Yeah, I mean, there's times, you know, I look back and and the, I don't think there was anybody in the UK that hadn't visited the Lineker's Bar at some point in their lives, you know. Probably right. Bad. Yeah, it was crazy, yeah. But like 30 years on, you've still got quite a few, haven't you? Yeah, they're still going. They're still doing all right, you know, Marbella, Ibiza, Tenerife, you know, the, the, the ones that really stood out for us, they're still there and they're still going well. I remember during like the when the uh, World Cup was on and England were doing all right. It was just it was just these wild videos of Linegas kind of all over the world, like Ibiza, Marbella, yeah. and if it was just like yeah. you know they were turning the, they were on the tables and it's mental. You were in there. I was indeed. Always. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know that's a big disappointment for us this year. Obviously, we've not got the Euros. The Euros, uh, yeah. Um, and to watch the games of Linegas is just next level. You know, the atmosphere is incredible. It still is to this day. And I think it always will be, you know, people get the face painted and the flags and this, and they all, they all congregate in Lydica's and uh, it just goes off. Yeah, I know that you'll know Lena in Marvea, and that Lena would have oh, the Lina. balloons out and she'd have all the yeah. flags out. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. We, we do a proper show, yeah. yeah so, from having Lineker's and having those bars, how did the whole kind of old beach thing come about? Like, what was the idea there? Well, I became, um, well, let's go back to 2000 and 2010, probably. I met Tony True. I met Tony Truman, um, who was very well known in the party scene for all his parties, true do's. Um, just to jump in, was, was Tony just doing his like big birthdays and stuff? I genuinely don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Tony used to hold these big parties he used to hire mansions out and things like that yeah and he hired he hired one out in uh, Marbella and um, it was back in the day when Katie Price was always in the news and, and yeah. people like her people like her rocked up to the party and you know and that and then we got introduced Tony and myself a few weeks before his first big party in Marbella and we just sort of hit it off um and just became mates really and then and then he said to me look I'd, I'd really like to open Linicas in, in uh, Ibiza. Um, I think that opened in 2008, actually. That was right. 2008. And, um, yeah, it was... Uh, uh, and, th- and then we sort of became business partners as well as friends. And then we were spending some time in Marbella once and we had a... We were in a swimming pool, actually, and uh, just chatting away. And we said, we need to open a, a beach club in Ibiza. I said, yeah, we do, mate. He said, I think I've got just the place for us. So we just chat, chatted for about an hour about it. And uh, and then, you know, he got back to Ibiza and he called me and he said, this was, I don't know, three years after Lineker's had opened. He called me and he said, look, come and have a look at the place. Um, and I went to have a look at it and I was like, wow, you know, the spot was amazing. Um, it was an old, old restaurant sort of wedding venue uh, that some Spanish family had for many, many years. Um, they come to the end of their uh, their working career. Really wanted to retire. It was just all fitted at the right time. We then did a deal for the venue, uh, which was two thirds of the size of what Ocean is now. And um, right. and then we sat back and we th- uh, as we planned it, we thought, you know, it's not quite big enough. And um, there was a restaurant next door. So I said, Tony, we need to try and get that as well. Yeah. Um, so he approached the people that owned it. It turned out it was the same family that owned it. So we did a deal on them both. And then and then as we knocked everything down, it was just too big. We were like, oh, my God, this is too big. It's massive. You know? Yeah, it was like literally a football field. You know? <laughs> like, what, what, the hell, what the hell are we going to do with all this, you know? But, you know, uh, it, uh, what is it, eight years on, and it's, it's just not big enough anymore. But uh, it's, a, it's been an incredible success story. You know, there's many people that have said to me, this will never take off in San Antonio, you know, as we were Because you, like, it. transformed that area, didn't you? I think we in did, a way. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I think we kept San, San Antonio back on the map to a certain extent. Um, you know, we do take a lot of tra- a lot of trade away from 
other venues, obviously, including Lineker's and places like that. But um, I do think we keep the tourists coming to San Antonio. Because you've got a few other things down there now as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've got quite a, quite a lot there. I mean, <laughs> you've got half um, the street. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but we've got we've got Lineker's, Ithaca, Skinny Kitchen. Uh, we're involved in Kiss My Fairy, obviously Tony with the Wiki Woo. Um, yeah, I can't really remember them all to be honest, but we've got we've got a lot. Uh, we've obviously got Bambaku opening now next door, which is going to be another uh, more chilled out vibe beach club. Um, that's probably again half the size of Ocean, maybe a bit more. Um, so that's going to be good. So yeah, we've got we've got a lot going on. We've got Sebo, um, the Tapas Bar opposite Ocean. Um, yeah, our fingers are in a lot of pies, and especially in San Antonio. Fingers in a lot of paellas. Paellas, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Oh. So, like, I tell you what, like, for someone who's obviously in this industry, you look at it now, and I think that maybe people haven't noticed it, but clearly there's, there was a big shift where suddenly day stuff was all people were interested in, which, you know, I get it. Like, if it was me, I just want to go and do day stuff. That is my priority, day stuff, overnight stuff, all day yeah. long, but... Why do you think that was? Because I know that like, Old Beach became kind of almost was at the heart of that. But did that happen before, or why did that happen? It it kind of it kind of before Ocean, it was, you could see the little shift, you know. Um, and yeah, people, I, I can't believe now looking back that why people didn't do it years ago, you know, like twenty, thirty years ago. It's like so know, obvious, it isn't it? It's like it's just get pissed so during the day. Obvious. It's amazing. <laughs> so obvious it's, it's it's the most obvious thing you've ever seen in this industry but um it's happened eventually i think ocean was the turning point for it when we opened you know it just it, it was just phenomenal um and it still is now it's incredible what's what's happening to ocean but you know other venues blue marlin places like that you know they they opened before us and so you know we weren't the pioneers of it but uh but we didn't um, we didn't uh, invent the pool party. We just perfected it. That's Sounds like a marketing <laughs> like that. That's good, Wayne. You yeah, can use that on a flyer. I do, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were doing it very differently, weren't they? When you think about it, like obviously Blue Marlin to Ocean is such a different vibe. Like you kind of made that day thing. Previously, day stuff was maybe quite premium and quite yeah unaccessible. Yeah, we, we did take a lot of ideas from Vegas. You know, uh, Vegas were probably a few years ahead of Ibiza in um, in new concepts and stuff like that. So we looked at that. We looked at Vegas a lot, and we designed we designed the venue around a three or four beach clubs in Vegas and in and obviously parts of things like from from uh, other beach clubs around Europe. But we uh, we got the right formula for sure. Something worked. So, like, obviously, yeah. as you said, I mean, Ocean Beach is like a monster now. Like, was it like that from the moment you opened the doors? Or did you have to kind of, like, work away at it and tweak it here and there? No, I mean, obviously, you know, it's nothing like it was today, but it was a, it was a, an immediate success um, for us anyway. Um, but we were in a lot of trouble when we opened Ocean, you know. We were very da- we we're days away from closure because we opened Why? it just financial reasons you know we went okay. way 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 over budget you know over a million pound over budget and uh wow. you know and that money had to be found you know so it was very difficult times um so we have had a struggle how bad um, was it we were days away days away from closure really? yeah we, we we nearly had to hand the towel in but we we refused to do that um and a guy called Maxi came along, who's now still partners. You know, he, he got yeah. us out of trouble uh, financially and became a partner. And it's probably the best thing he's ever done, to be honest. <laughs> Good investment. Around, and, uh, yeah, he's not a dad. He's, he's, he's a shrewd guy. He could see the, he could see the platform there. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, it was a struggle. Um, people don't see that side. They just think it was all roses. But, you know, we, you know, we had many sleepless nights um, trying to, trying to get the venue open then it opened late into the summer you know we needed we needed some big days you know to get us out of trouble and uh and uh the first opening party pissed out a raid all day we're like fuck <laughs> you know but um but yeah uh, it's it slowly turned around probably uh 
2012 we opened, so probably 2013-14 we started reaping the benefits, you know. Is there anything, looking back, you wish you knew then that you know now? Cool, have you got an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Separate podcast. Um, you know, to be honest, uh, uh, as far as Ocean's concerned, it couldn't have gone any better. Obviously, uh, looking back at the financial difficulties at the start, you know, we'd have probably done a few things different. But, uh, you know, if you're going to put your heart into something like like myself and Tony and my son Dwayne, etc., do, then you've got to go all out, and uh, you know you can't you can't hold back, and eventually you'll get paid off for that. So you've mentioned you mentioned Dwayne there, like who people who don't know, like Dwayne's your mm. son, and you work with Dwayne. Like, what's that like? Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. You know, I mean, he's Dwayne's not the sort of person that wants the limelight. He doesn't, you know, yeah. he doesn't go on social media. He doesn't, he doesn't like that side of life. You know, I make up for it for him. Uh, <laughs> Just a bit. Yeah. But, you know, uh, we both bring different things to the business. Dwayne runs the whole back of house, you know, the accounts, um, you know, the rotors, you know, every every problem behind the scenes is dealt with by Dwayne. Um, every, every, everything that's in that system wise, you know, from for taking money and the tools is, is all is all done by my son, Dwayne. You know, basically him and Tony do all the work and I take all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> At least you've got it the right way around. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Do you know, I think some people might not even... I mean, everyone knows Old Beach is a monster. But someone told me something, and you can tell me if this is right or not, but in terms of Ciroc, Ciroc Vodka, which is the vodka that everyone sees everywhere, yeah. you are like the fifth top seller in the world. Is that right or is it different or...? No, that's wrong. We are number that's one wrong. in the world. Number one?! Yeah, number one in the world. That's mental when you blink the places yeah. in Vegas and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're the biggest account in the world for. How so much of that are you drinking? Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I'm the reason for it. It was fifth until you started drinking it. <laughs> no, I believe I, I do believe we're number one. Yeah, that's mad, yeah. really. We're definitely number one in Europe, uh, but I think we're number one in the world. But I'll, I'd have to double check that. It's incredible, really. Yeah, and I mean, Merv Cleek. Really? Yeah, we're number one there as well. Got a monster, haven't you? God. Yeah, yeah, it's a monster, yeah. So, I mean, even from Instagram, it doesn't take, like, Sherlock Holmes to figure out, like, just how important kind of your family are and obviously Dwayne's working yeah. with you. How do you balance that when you've got bars and nightlife stuff with your kind of life outside? Um. I don't know. Uh, I, I post pictures of my, my granddaughter, Myla, and my, and my family, my children, um, because I want to post them, you know. I want to, yeah. I want to, show, I want to show the world my family, not just my businesses. Um, I think that gives people an insight to what sort of a person I am as well. You know, yeah. I don't want my Instagram to be all about business. Um, you know, I like, I like to use it as, as I wish to use it, you know. Some things I post people don't really like, but, you know, that's not my business, you know. Something I've noticed just from whenever I've seen you about and we've met and been at events and stuff, you're pretty upbeat, aren't you, generally? Oh, you, you don't get more upbeat than me, mate. <laughs> like, where yeah. do you get your energy from? Like, you don't stop, do you, really? No, I don't, mate. I mean, opening part, uh, when we opened Ocean, I did um, 100 hangovers in 100 days. <laughs> you know, so I went out every single night till 7 a.m. in the morning. I went home, went to sleep, woke up around 1 o'clock, went for lunch at Ocean, had a glass of red wine, had a vodka Red Bull, had another glass of red wine, I was back in the game. That was me for 100 No, wouldn't you? the top in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I don't know, really. Um, I just, it's something I've been born with, I guess. Party skills. <laughs> 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 Top of the CV. Yeah. So one thing I would ask is obviously when I've seen that you're always pretty positive and stuff, how do you deal with things when maybe they're not ideal or perfect or maybe like they are a bit now with this like bloody now, coronavirus yeah. and all the rest of it? Yeah, I mean, it is very difficult right now. You know, I'm, I'm sat here in England and, and um, you know, tomorrow's our opening party and uh, it, it does become, a ch a, you try and put it at the back of your mind, but it's very difficult um, but you know, there's people in this world that are losing loved ones left, right, and centre. You know, there's 
people yeah. dying out everywhere and you know fortunately i've got i've got my health and my family's got their health and my friends and you know you just got to look at it like that really and uh you know, as much as I want to feel sorry for myself, you know, this is someone always worse <laughs> off than me, you know, for sure. So in terms of trying to stay positive, what is your plans for the rest of the summer, roughly? Do you know what you're going to do? I know it's a difficult well, question. Yeah, it's a very difficult question because we, we don't know. We're just living on hope like everyone else is at the moment. Um, you know, uh, we, we could sort of write off May and June now. Um and we're just looking at July now to see what's happening over the next few weeks. But we, we really do hope to be open at some point, even though there will be some restrictions this year, obviously. But it's out of our hands, you know, whether they open the borders and the flights start coming in, you know. But it is going to be different. Whatever happens this year, you know, we're not going to get the freedom we had last year. I think 2021 will be the most phenomenal year in the history of nightclubs you know or beach clubs it's going to be crazy but I think we've, we've just got to accept that this year is not going to be the same whatever happens and um, just look forward to next year really that's all we can do I mean that's the positive isn't it that out of all the places on the face of this earth when this place is ready people will flock to Ibiza flock there uh, absolutely I mean if you see my social media it's like people just cannot wait to get there and it's always about Ibiza, you know. They're never, they're never writing these uh, dreams about going to uh, other resorts, you know. No, it's, it's not. Big, Ibiza's different anywhere else in the world. It's just, just Ibiza, 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 Ibiza. So, you know, we we're obviously very confident about the future and about the, uh, what's going to happen in Ibiza. But just this year is just becoming an absolute nightmare. But we're going you know, to on that note, why do you think? Why do you think it, it's Ibiza? It's not. I know Ibiza's got the history and stuff, but what is so special about Ibiza that everybody wants to go there and that's the place they're missing, not wherever else, Vegas, Dubai, Marbella, Miami? Yeah, I mean, I went to Vegas um, last year and I was so disappointed with the vibe, you know. It's the uh, music, Wayne. What are they doing? The music's horrific. Oh, Jeez. Every, every <laughs> single venue is like, I don't get it. Like, oh. No, me neither. But that's Americans for you, you know, so... I think being a European and, and, and being obviously from the UK, um, it's just the general vibe in Europe that the music's so, so important. And um, it's just the people that go to Ibiza, they seem to enter this, like, this world of happiness and, and, don't, and forget everything, you know. And everyone's friendly to each other. There's never any trouble. You know, everyone can, everyone's approachable. And, you know, it's, it's just a great place. And you can't, you can't work out why. If you land on that island and before you get off that plane, you're just you're breathing different air. You know, it's a, it's an amazing vibe. Yeah. Do you know what's funny? It's the only thing on the face of this earth where Ibiza is similar to Newcastle in the sense that you can go yeah. to a toilet and everyone's happy. Everyone's happy to be there. No one's have giving people a hard time. People are like just mm. there to have fun. Yeah, uh, Newcastle is great, great city. Man. <laughs> I mean, it's the only great. thing that's similar. Nothing else. <laughs> They're crazy people, uh, but we but we love crazy. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's a few years since I've been to Newcastle to go on a night out. I went to Top Top Palace a few years ago, and uh, yeah, great vibe there. When this but is yeah, over, I mean, I'll take you to Candy Pants Newcastle. Deal. Can't can't wait. Can't wait. So you know, like, when I thought about it and I've looked at it, essentially your social media is from a marketing person like me. It's borderline genius. Like you're super accessible, that like you have a laugh with people, you speak to people. So people kind of think you're one of their mates. Like, do you put a lot yeah. of thought into that or did that just come about? No, it's just the way I am, you know. I mean, I'm always, um, I always speak to people, you know, I get selfies at Ocean like 300, 400 a day now. Uh, and I just enjoy it, you know, I enjoy being friendly. You know, I don't want to be stuck up my own ass and stuff like that, you know, like certain people are, but. Um, yeah, I'm just a friendly guy and um, I'm one of the lads at the end of the day and I'm just here to have a laugh and enjoy myself. How important do you think you are to like that brand of Old Beach now? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think we all play our part, as I said before. You know, we're, That's we're, so we're, diplomatic. Yeah, it's true though. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I know I get a lot of... Uh, I get a lot of um, 
people thinking everything's about me at Ocean, but it's not, you know. Um, it's just the way things have happened. And because uh, from the very early days, um, I absolutely pushed the concepts and Ocean. And um, I think it's just stemmed from that, really. And I've obviously continued to do that. And um, people do go on my page just to even sometimes cheer themselves up, I guess, but um, or make themselves even sadder but <laughs> at the moment. But, but yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm honoured people uh, look at me in that way and uh, enjoy my social media. Something you said there, which I think that I noticed this when I saw it, it was a couple of years ago, I was in Ibiza, and like I stood out of the way and I, I watched something and I thought, you know what, just from somebody else who works at night, I was like, that's so impressive and that's kind of, I thought to myself, I was like, that's what I want to do, that's how I want to be like, is the fact that yeah. you spent time, selfie thing aside, you almost seem to know every member of staff, whether they were sweeping the floors, cleaning the toilets, or they were the prettiest bottle girl. You yeah. knew them all, and they all knew you, and I loved that. Yeah, we're, we're, I mean, there's 300 staff at Ocean, um, and we all know each other, and it's all, it's a great vibe. You know, we have end-of-year parties and stuff like that. But, yeah, we're all, on, we're all, on, we're all like mates, really. Um, there's no... There's no regimental routines at Ocean, you know, you don't have to do this. And, you know, it's obviously they're all very professional in what they do, but we also allow our staff to have a good time. We want them to have a good time. We encourage it, you know, because, you know, if the staff are moping around miserable, that's not a good look, is it? It's not. I mean, you mentioned something earlier that for whatever reason, you've almost become kind of the face of this, like, part of the island in Ibiza, the whole selfie thing. It's almost like... If you went to Ibiza and you didn't have a picture with Wayne, you might as well have not gone. Like, how yeah. did that come about? Or was that always a thing? It was, uh, it was just a gradual thing, really. I mean, um, it just started happening first year. We opened, you know, slowly. And then the next year it was more. And then by... So it it by, didn't happen when you had Lineker. It started with your beach thing. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, they used to get the odd selfie at Lineker's, but nothing like, you know. Yeah. And... Um, and now it's you know there's stag and hen parties that come on that like a hen party for example they'll have a bucket list of ten things they have to do in Ibiza and I'm always number one. <laughs> <my Lydica. laughs> it's madness, absolute madness. Do you know what's funny? So many people when I said I was you were going to come on the podcast, they'd kind of said they were like, "Do you reckon you get sick of that?" And just from being there and seeing it, I know you don't. No, never, never. I mean, I said it before, but. I think the only reason I'd, I'd get sick of it is if they stopped asking. Yeah. What would you yeah. do if they stopped asking? Maybe ask them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, there's a there's a funny one last year. Some some lad took a picture of me. Uh, right. He had a selfie with me, and uh, and he had his uh, he had his cock out. I've seen this. <laughs> I had absolutely no idea. And, uh, <laughs> and he went home and shared it on his social media. And all, all the boys, great banter. But yeah, it's funny though. <laughs> what is it like for you to stand on that stage at Old Beach and think, bloody hell, like these people have genuinely, they've saved, they've worked all year, they've saved up all their money and they've chosen to spend it somewhere that I built. Like, What's that like to stand there and see it? Euphoric. It's an incredible feeling, you know. Um, it really, really is. You know, I, I do. I look. I do it all the time. I look out and, and see everybody having a good time. Everyone's laughing. Everyone's smiling. Everyone's dancing. And you know, it's it's madness. You know, people have, you know, spent two months thinking what they're going to wear for Ocean, you know, or O Beach, and uh, yeah, it's mad, mate. But you know, it's part it's part of life for me now, and uh, it, I, I'll, I'll never get tired of that ever. Because I think that probably people might wonder that, like. Will he ever get sick of it? Like, why is he there every day? And I get it. Like, look what you've built and you were part of and look how much people love it and they enjoy it and they're just having yeah. fun. Like, I mean, it's like, it must be addictive almost. Yeah, I mean, people say to me, how can you do this every day? And I'm like, what? So I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Stay indoors and watch Loose Women? Yeah, some yeah. people sit in an office 9 or 5 every day. How yeah. do they do that yeah. every day? That's what I wonder. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a bigger question to ask you. Yeah. Right. So, what do you think's been your favourite memory of Old Beach so far? Oh my god, so so many. Um, every closing and every opening party are just are just phenomenal, emotional. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I don't really have one particular memory that that stands out above any other. I've got just so many um, uh, uh, great moments that I've had there that that, that just are uh, just incredible, you know. But to pick one out is very difficult. If you had to say there was a moment where you know you said you've built it and there was an issue with like where you thought, oh, like, are we going to have the money to do this? Was there a time, a day, that or an event that you went, hold on, like? You maybe you set a tone. You went. I think we've done it. I, I think we've cracked it. Yeah, I had a moment with Tony. Um, I think it was the f- a second closing party. You know, we had a big moment together, and we said, "Look what we've done, man! You know, this is amazing." You know, and we knew we knew from that day, or from well, because of over that summer, uh, the second year that it was it was just going to get better and better and better. You know, and we got. We got you. Got to remember that there's a thousand, sometimes you know, sixteen hundred people in there, um, all taking social media pictures, posting it on Instagram. You know, the we don't have to pay for any of that. It's all free advertising, and um, and they're always having a great time. They've, nobody's ever got anything bad to say about Ocean, and uh, you know, I think we're the most Instagram club in the world now, um, by far. You know, so it's it's a it's an incredible achievement. You're right, because every summer you go on. Like last summer, I, I had a few operations, so I was stuck at home, and I was mm. on Instagram, and it was orange cups, those beds, Everyone. ocean beach, you. You could not move <laughs> online yeah, for that I stuff. Know. I know it's madness, man, but um, yeah, it's it's, but it is very Instagrammable, and you know, it's become a trend now. You know, you can't. You can't go to Ocean and not, have, not post a picture on your social media. It's just not the done thing anymore, is it? You know, people, you want to show people you're at Ocean. That probably is testament of what you've built because that's not easy to do. It happens, but people don't know how hard it is to create something that people want to share with their friends because it's almost a status symbol that I've got. This is where I am. Look how cool this is. Yeah. I mean, when you go to Ocean, you know, you, you'll come, you'll have a bed. Uh, ocean eight or ten of you but before the before the end of the day you're leaving with another 30 or 40 or 50 friends you know um it's such a it's such a sociable place everyone's chats to each other there's no you know there's there's nothing that doesn't stop them chatting they're just having a great time and they're enjoying it and the sun's out and the girls are in bikinis and the lads are in shorts i mean it's you're all getting excited cool. already aren't you i can tell uh, <laughs> it, it's killing me man it's killing me Right, are you up for a quick fire round? Quick question, quick answer. Go on then. Right, favourite guest at Ocean Beach? Ed Sheeran. Biggest celebrity party animal? Dan Bilzerian. What's the most someone spent on one bill? Can't tell you that. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. What's your pet hate about events, nightlife, bars? My pet hate? Um, when people don't ask you for selfies? Oh, I love, I love being asked <laughs> selfies. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the bad one. When they don't ask. <laughs> when they don't ask, yeah. Right, this will be hard. What's the wildest thing you've seen at Old Beach that you can say on the podcast? Oh, um, <laughs> some woman doing a, a tit drop on me. She put me, on the, she put me on the floor and got her tits out. She was a big girl, a big girl. <laughs> and she went, I want, to, I want to tit drop you. I went, okay. So I lied on the floor and there she was. She went for it. She dropped it both of both. Both a, cle- a cleavage right in my face. <laughs> it was the big moment. <laughs> another one that I, th- I only thought of this this morning, and I thought that'd be interesting. If you could build another venue anywhere in the world, budget is like no object. What yeah. kind of thing would you build and where? Don't say uh, Old Beach and Ibiza. <laughs> o- o Beach, Dubai. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're so tell me about next, that. The next level. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, there's complications there at the moment because of covid and uh it will cause a delay to opening but um but you know there's no expense being spared on this venue it's going to be absolutely incredible uh i've seen all the plans and the visuals which we've not released to the public yet but that is going to be sensational like next level and you've got a few other things in like just from like working in events and stuff i know that there's a bit of a story with this what other things have you got planned in Dubai? You've got a few other things, haven't you, on top of Obish? Yeah, I mean, at the same venue, we're going to build a bamboo as well um, and a skinny kitchen and uh, all sorts of things going in that whole... It's going to be like a whole complex, like a yeah. 
like, like a mini Ibiza, if you like. There's other venues coming in from Ibiza that we're inviting in. Uh, I can't can't disclose who they yeah. are at the moment, but um, yeah, it will it will really be uh, sensational. Yeah. Have you got anything else planned outside of the stuff in Dubai? Yeah, we have. Uh, we've got Bali in the pipeline. Um, really. And other places, I think Tenerife, um, may, maybe getting an Ocean Beach soon or O Beach soon. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Bali's looking really good. Um, I think in the future, you know, the next five or ten years, you'll see probably at least ten O Beaches popping up across the world, maybe even Vegas. A lot of people probably listen to this would say, you know what, looking at someone like Wayne, Wayne's made it, like whatever made it means, but do you feel like that? <laughs> uh, I don't know, really. I never really look at it like that. I mean, I do look at my life and think it is pretty incredible. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm truly blessed with uh, all the love I get from everyone and, and the position that I'm in. You know, it, it is a very rare one. You know, it's... Uh, I get time and time again, day in, day out. People just say, I just want to be you. I just want to be you. I said, well, you know, I'm not doing no job swaps at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> how much do you think, like, how much longer do you think you can keep doing it? Like, I'm 28 and I cannot do it like I used to do it when I was 21. <coughs> like, I'm past it now. No. I haven't got inners. No. Like, how are you still going? Like, how much longer do you think you can keep going? No, I don't be daft. Uh, it's It's just adrenaline, really, you know. You know, when I walk in ocean and and there's, <laughs> it's just the adrenaline that rushes through my body is just insane. You know, I guess it's just the character that I am, and um, I just enjoy every minute. And uh, long may it continue. What's the goal now? What do you want to do? Um, I don't know really. I mean, just just keep doing what we're doing. Open new venues. Um, I'm very excited for Dubai when that happens. Um, yeah, I just. Taking one day at a time, well, as much as I can, but yeah, it's difficult not to get carried away, but sometimes, but um, I've got my son, Dwayne, he's the father in the relationship, he keeps me, my feet on the ground, really, um, but yeah, I mean, life's good, man. Right, so on the theme of parties, a bit of a random one, but see what you think, you can have a dinner party, you can invite anyone, alive or dead, you can invite four other people, who would you invite? Oh, four people. Yeah. Um, well, Chris Brown, he's, he's, he's my guy at the minute. I love him. He's, yeah. Uh, it, it, it definitely be on the table. Um, probably, uh, oh, I don't know. It's so difficult. You put me on the spot here. It's a good question, um, then. I mean, it's controversial, but I, I, I definitely have Michael Jackson there. He's the big guy yeah. of mine. And, uh, uh, I love him, yeah. Um, so you've got some good dancers at this party yeah just people like that i just i just look up to you know and think wow it's just such incredible talents you know um but yeah uh who else would i be probably uh i do like scott disick he's a boy <laughs> he's a character he's a great kid yeah he's uh he's 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 definitely another version of me yeah um but yeah, I like him. But women-wise, I don't know. I best not say that to the moment. It's good to see you'll get yourself in trouble, maybe. Yeah, there's no one to get in trouble with at the minute. But um, yeah. Last person. Oh. So you've done three. Who was your Who was your Who was your last one? Gaza. <sighs> what a guy. Love what it. What a guy. He's a. He's, he's a. This dinner party would be wild. <laughs> I've met him once, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty good friends and um, he is the funniest guy I've ever met in my life, you know. He came to he came to the opening party and we had a bar in Blackpool back in the day. Right. And he came to the opening party and um, and he was at the time when he was mates with Jimmy Firebellies and they both stayed at the hotel that I was staying in. And, right. Um, and uh, Gazza and Jimmy had the same, oh no, Gazza had the no room next to Jimmy and Gazza went in and pissed on his radiator before he went out. <laughs> So he let all his tyres down on his car. So after we went out, he got, Jimmy got back to his room. He couldn't sleep in it because it stunk of piss. He wanted to go home. Got, got to his car and he, he couldn't drive it because his tyres were all flat. <laughs> hilarious. 
do you know, it, I mean, my Gaza story, so obviously like, I, I'm from Newcastle, so this is like where I grew yeah. up. Yeah, and uh, sure, yeah. so like my mum and dad, like when they grew up, like they, obviously they had a house in Newcastle when I was really little. And this is like mm. when Gaza was playing for Newcastle. And like weirdly enough, Glenn Roder, who was the captain of Newcastle United, used to live across mm. the road. And because mm. Gaza would be so wild, Glenn Roder had to take him to training because otherwise he just wouldn't go or he'd be lost or he decided to have done something else. So they had this thing where, Gaza, you've got to go to Glenn's house in the morning and then Glenn will take you to train. Glenn was the sensible one. And there was one morning, my dad's gone out of his car and someone's like gone out of his car and nicked his radio. So my dad's gone across the road to see Glenn Roder and gone, Glenn, like, just you want to check your car, you know, like someone's nicked me radio. So Glenn comes up, and at the same time, Gaza and Jimmy Five Blellies are driving up the street in this little mini, and they've driven up, and Gaza's obviously like, oh, what's happening here? And he's going, oh, someone's there, someone's nicked Keith's radio, like, and he's like, ah, no bother, what kind of radio was it? I'll ring the lads, I'll find out what it was, and I'll get it straight back for you, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. But yeah, I mean, one more story from Gaza. You know, he was training with, uh, I think Gary was there at the time, Tottenham. Right. And um, Gaza kicked the ball out the uh, out the training facility. So he had to go and get it. So he went, don't worry about it, I'll go and, I'll go and get it. Two days later, he came back. <laughs> so I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Unbelievable. But yeah, anyway. Right, so last two questions. I'll let you go, I know you're busy. If you could make a phone call, to yourself in the past, so like Wayne, who's maybe just opened that bar in Tenerife, what advice on the phone would you give him now, based on what you know? Um, well, I mean, I learned very early, you've just got to be nice to people, you know, um, you know, to, to everyone, to the delivery people, to the people in the bank, to, you know, every everyone that's associated with that business, you've just got to be nice to them, you know, be polite, um, so yeah, I mean, I learned very quickly. You, you know, you can't, you can't be. You've just got to be a nice, humble soul to people. Really, that's all the advice I can give. And on the same kind of topic, if Wayne in ten years' time was going to ring you today, what do you think he would say to you? What advice would he give you? <laughs> I can't tell you that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's mistakes I've made, you know, that I look back and think, you know, you idiot, you know, um, you know, I can't tell you what they are, but, um, but yeah, I've, 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 like everybody, you know, life's a learning curve. You learn from your mistakes. Sometimes it takes you longer than others, which certainly did me. Um, but I'm at a good place in my life now, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's times I've gone a bit overboard with, with my nights out and stuff like that, and done crazy things that I regret, but. Um, Apart from that, I'm, I'm all good, you know. Wayne, thank you so, so much, honestly. People are going to love You're this, welcome, I know they you. are, and thank you so I much for coming so. on. You're welcome, mate. Thanks, Nick. Cheers, pal. And I'll see you, hopefully, at Candy Pants, some event throughout this summer. So there you have it. The story of Mr Ibiza himself, Wayne Lineker. We really do hope we're going to see you and I be there at some point soon, whenever that will be. But when it eventually does come, you will find our candy pants parties at O Beach with Wayne. You'll also find us every Tuesday and Saturday at STK Ibiza and at the brand new soon to open Bamboo Coo. If you're still looking for a little bit of a candy pants dose over the next few days, don't forget to check out our candy pants radio show. Simply search candy pants wherever you listen to your podcasts. But from me, thank you very, very much for listening as always. And we'll see you all hopefully very soon.